best food services training. This lesson will give you instructions on good hygienic practices as required by the TFER. The TFER is Title 25. Part 1, Chapter 228, Texas Administrative Code, Health Services, Department of State Health Services, Texas Food Establishment Rules. This is a law, people. Pay attention. How and when to wash hands. Clean condition. Food employees shall keep their hands and exposed portions of their arms clean. How to Washington food employees shall clean their hands and exposed portions of their arms, including surrogate prosthetic devices for hands or arms for at least 20 seconds, using a cleaning compound in a hand washing sink that is properly equipped. Food employees shall use the following cleaning procedure in the order stated to clean their hands and exposed portions of their arms, including surrogate prosthetic devices for hands and arms. Rinse under clean, running warm water, apply an amount of cleaning compound recommended by the cleaning compound manufacturer, rub together vigorously for at least 10 to 15 seconds while paying attention to removing soil from underneath the fingernails during the cleaning procedure. Creating friction on the surfaces of the hands and arms or surrogate prosthetic devices for hands and arms, fingertips, and areas between the fingers. Thoroughly rinse under clean, running warm water. Immediately follow the cleaning procedure with thorough drying using an approved method. To avoid recontaminating their hands or surrogate prosthetic devices, food employees may use disposable paper towels or similar clean barriers when touching surfaces such as manually operated faucet handles on a hand washing sink or the handle of a restroom door. If approved and capable of removing the types of soils encountered in the food operations involved, an automatic hand washing facility may be used by food employees to clean their hands or surrogate prosthetic devices. Special hand wash procedures. Employees not utilizing suitable utensils or sink or loose gloves when handling ready to eat foods, bare hand contact, shall use the above hand washing instructions hands plus the procedures detailed below. When to Washington food employees shall clean their hands and exposed portions of their arms immediately before engaging in food preparation including working with exposed food, clean equipment and utensils, and unwrapped single service and single use articles and, after touching bare human body parts other than clean hands and clean, exposed portions of arms. After using the toilet room. After caring for or handling service animals or aquatic animals. After coughing, sneezing, using a handkerchief or disposable tissue, using tobacco, eating, or drinking. After handling soiled equipment or utensils. During food preparation, as often as necessary to remove soil and contamination and to prevent cross-contamination when changing tasks. When switching between working with raw food and working with ready-to-eat food. Before donning gloves to initiate a task that involves working with food and, after engaging in other activities that contaminate the hands. If you pick up a pen to write something down, are your hands now clean? No. There is no telling where that pen has been. If you answer the phone, are your hands now clean? No. There is no telling where that phone has been. Watch what you touch. Hand antiseptics. A hand antiseptic used as a topical application, a hand antiseptic solution used as a hand lip, or a hand antiseptic soap shall comply with one of the following, be an approved drug that is listed in the FDA publication approved drug products with therapeutic equivalence evaluations as an approved drug based on safety and effectiveness, or have active antimicrobial ingredients that are listed in the FDA monograph for OCK healthcare antiseptic drug products as an antiseptic hand wash, and consider List only of components which the intended use of each complies with one of the following, a threshold of regulation exemption or indirect food additives, adjuvants, production aids, and sanitizers as regulated for use as a food additive with conditions of safe use, or a determination of generally recognized as safe, grass, dash substances generally recognized as safe, 
direct food substance is affirmed as generally recognized as safe, or indirect food substance is affirmed as generally recognized as safe for use in contact with food, and an FDA's inventory of grass notices, or food contact notification that is effective, and be applied only to hands that have been cleaned as specified earlier. If a hand antiseptic or a hand antiseptic solution used as a hand dip does not meet the criteria in the above two paragraphs, then you must follow by thorough hand rinsing in clean water before hand contact with food or using gloves or bare hands or limited to situations that involve no direct contact with food by the bare hands. A hand antiseptic solution used as a hand dip shall be maintained clean and at a strength equivalent to at least 100 mg slash L chlorine. Required supplies at hand wash sink. Approved system and cleanable fixtures. A plumbing system shall be designed, constructed, and installed per the plumbing code. A plumbing fixture such as a hand washing facility, toilet, or urinal shall be easily cleanable. Hand washing facility, installation. A hand washing sink shall be equipped to provide water at a temperature of at least 100 F through a mixing valve or combination faucet. A steam mixing valve may not be used at a hand washing sink. A self-closing, slow-closing, or metering faucet shall provide a flow of water for at least 15 seconds without the need to reactivate the faucet. Approved soap dispenser must always contain soap. Approved hand drying facilities for thoroughly drying your hands may be air-driven or paper dispensing machines. An automatic hand washing facility shall be installed in accordance with manufacturer's instructions. An air gap between the water supply inlet and the flood level rim of the plumbing fixture, equipment, or non-food equipment shall be at least twice the diameter of the water supply inlet and may not be less than 25 mm 1 inch. A backflow or backsophonage prevention device installed on a water supply system shall meet American Society of Sanitary Engineering standards for construction, installation, maintenance, inspection, and testing for that specific application and type of device. A water filter, screen, and other water conditioning device installed on water lines shall be designed to facilitate dyes assembly for periodic servicing and cleaning. A water filter element shall be of the replaceable type. Where to Washington food employees shall clean their hands in a hand washing sink or approved automatic hand washing facility and may not clean their hands in a sink used for food preparation or wear washing or in a service sink or a curb cleaning facility used for the disposal of mop water and similar liquid waste. Using gloves correctly. Except when washing fruits and vegetables, food handlers may not contact exposed, ready to eat food with their bare hands. They must use suitable utensils such as delight tissue spatulas, tongs, single-use gloves, or dispensing equipment. If used, single-use gloves shall be used for only one task such as working with ready-to-eat food or with raw animal food, used for no other purpose, and discarded when damaged or soiled, or when interruptions occur in the operation. Slash resistant gloves that are used to protect the hands during operations requiring cutting shall be used in direct contact only with food that is properly cooked with foods such as frozen food or a primal cut of meat. Slash resistant gloves may be used with ready to eat food that will not be subsequently cooked if the slash resistant gloves have a smooth, durable, and non-absorbent outer surface. Or if the slash resistant gloves are covered with a smooth, durable, non-absorbent glove, or a single use glove. Cloth gloves may not be used in direct contact with food unless the food is afterwards properly cooked. Fingernail Maintenance Food employees shall keep their fingernails trimmed, filed, and maintained so the edges and surfaces are cleanable and not rough. Unless wearing intact gloves and good repair, a food employee may not wear fingernail polish or artificial fingernails when working with exposed food. Jewelry Prohibition Except for a plain ring such as a wedding band, while preparing food, food employees may not wear jewelry including medical information jewelry on their arms and hands. Outer Clothing, Clean Condition 
Food employees shall wear clean outer clothing to prevent contamination of food, equipment, utensils, linens, and single service and single use articles. Eating, drinking, or using tobacco. An employee can only eat, drink, or use any form of tobacco in designated areas where the contamination of any of the following cannot result exposed food, clean equipment, utensils, and linens. Unwrap single service and single use articles. Other items needing protection. A food handler can have a drink if it is a closed beverage container that is handled to prevent contamination of the employee's hands. The container. Exposed food, clean equipment, utensils, and linens, and unwrapped single service and single use articles. Animal handling prohibition. Food handlers may not care for or handle animals that may be present such as patrol dogs, service animals, or pets that are allowed in food service facilities. Food handlers who personally have assistance animals may handle or care for their assistance animals and food handlers may handle or care for fish in aquariums of mollusk and shellfish or crustacean and display tanks if they properly wash their hands afterwards. Hair restraints. Food handlers shall wear hair restraints such as hats, hair coverings or nets, beard restraints, and clothing that cover body hair that are designed and worn to effectively keep their hair from contacting exposed food and clean utensils and linens, or unwrapped single service or single use articles. This does not apply to food employees such as counter staff, who only serve beverages and wrapped or packaged foods, hostesses, and wait staff if they present a minimal risk of contaminating exposed food. What if you are sick? Reportable symptoms. Responsibilities and reporting symptoms and diagnosis. A responsibility of permit holder, person in charge, and conditional employees. The permit holder shall require food employees and conditional employees to report to the person in charge information about their health and activities as they relate to diseases that are transmissible through food. A food employee or conditional employee shall report the information in a manner that allows the person in charge to reduce the risk of foodborne disease transmission, such as the date of onset of symptoms in an illness, or of a diagnosis if the food employee or conditional employee has any of the following symptoms, vomiting, diarrhea, jaundice, sore throat with fever, a lesion containing pus such as a boil or infected wound that is open or draining in his, on the hands or wrists, unless an impermeable cover such as a finger caught or stall protects the lesion and a single-use glove is worn over the impermeable cover. On exposed portions of the arms, unless the lesion is protected by an impermeable cover or on other parts of the body, unless the lesion is covered by a dry, durable, tight-fitting bandage has an illness diagnosed by a health practitioner due to A. norovirus, B. hepatitis A virus, C. Shigella SBP, D. Shiga toxin producing Escherichia coli, E. Salmonella typhi, F. non-typhoidal salmonella. A PDF explaining these pathogens will be available for download below the movie had a previous illness, diagnosed by a health practitioner, within the past three months due to Salmonella typhi, without having received antibiotic therapy, as determined by a health practitioner, has been exposed to, or is the suspected source of, a confirmed disease outbreak, because the food employee or conditional employee consumed or prepared food implicated in the outbreak, or consumed food at an event prepared by a person who is infected or ill with, Norovirus within the past 48 hours of the last exposure, Shiga toxin producing Escherichia coli or Shigella within the past three days of the last exposure. Salmonella typhi within the past 14 days of the last exposure, Hepatitis A virus within the past 30 days of the last exposure, or has been exposed by attending or working in a setting where there is a confirmed disease outbreak, or living in the same household as and has knowledge about an individual who works or attends a setting where there is a confirmed disease outbreak or living in the same household as and has knowledge about an individual diagnosed with an illness caused by norovirus within the past 48 hours of the last exposure.
Shiga toxin producing a Sherichi coli or Shigella SPP. Within the past three days of the last exposure, Salmonella typhi within the past 14 days of the last exposure, or hepatitis a virus within the past 30 days of the last exposure. B. The person in charge shall notify the regulatory authority when a food employee is jaundiced or diagnosed with an illness due to a pathogen as specified above in this section. C. The person in charge shall ensure that a conditional employee who exhibits or reports a symptom or who reports diagnosed illness as specified above is prohibited from becoming a food employee until the conditional employee meets the criteria for the specific symptoms as specified in the exclusions and restrictions section later. To will work as a food employee in a food establishment that serves as a highly susceptible population and reports a history of exposure is prohibited from becoming a food employee until the conditional employee meets the required criteria. D. The person in charge shall ensure that a food employee who exhibits or reports a symptom or who reports a diagnosed illness or a history of exposure as specified in the exclusions and restrictions section later. E. A food employee or conditional employee shall report to the person in charge the information as specified under A of this section. F. A food employee shall comply with the exclusions and restrictions section next. Conditions of exclusions and restrictions. The person in charge shall exclude or restrict a food employee from a food establishment in accordance with the following, except when the symptom is from a non-infectious condition, exclude a food employee if the food employee is symptomatic with vomiting or diarrhea, symptomatic with vomiting or diarrhea and diagnosed with an infection from norovirus, Shigella SPP, non-typhoidal salmonella, or Shiga toxin producing E. coli. Exclude a food employee who is jaundiced and the onset occurred within the last seven calendar days, unless the food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner specifying that the jaundice is not caused by hepatitis a virus or other fecal or orally transmitted infection. Diagnosed with an infection from hepatitis a virus within 14 calendar days from the onset of any illness symptoms, or within seven calendar days of the onset of jaundice or diagnosed with an infection from hepatitis a virus without developing symptoms. Exclude a food employee who is diagnosed with an infection from Salmonella typhi or reports a previous infection with Salmonella typhi within the past three months. If a food employee is diagnosed with an infection from norovirus and is asymptomatic, Exclude the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population. Restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population. If a food employee is diagnosed with an infection from Shigella SPP and is asymptomatic, exclude the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population. Restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population. If a food employee is diagnosed with an infection from Shiga toxin producing coli and is asymptomatic, exclude the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population. Restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population. If a food employee is diagnosed with an infection from non-typhoidal salmonella and is asymptomatic, Restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population or in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population. If a food employee is ill with symptoms of acute onset of sore throat with fever, exclude the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population. Restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population. If a food employee is infected with a skin lesion containing pus such as a boil or infected wound that is open or draining and not properly covered restrict the food employee. If a food employee is exposed to a foodborne pathogen restrict the food employee who works in a food establishment serving a highly susceptible population. Managing Exclusions and Restrictions
The person in charge shall adhere to the following conditions when removing or adjusting the exclusion or restriction of a food employee. 1. Except when the food employee is diagnosed with an infection from hepatitis A virus or salmonella typhi, reinstate a food employee if the food employee is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours or provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner that states the symptom is from a non-infectious condition. If a food employee was diagnosed with an infection from norovirus, restrict the food employee who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population, until the conditions for reinstatement are met or retain the exclusion for the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment that serves a highly susceptible population, until the conditions for are met. If a food employee was diagnosed with an infection from Shigella SBP and excluded, restrict the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population, until the conditions for reinstatement are met or retained. In the exclusion for the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment that serves a highly susceptible population, until the conditions for reinstatement are met. If a food employee was diagnosed with an infection from Shiga toxin producing a Sherichia coli and excluded, restrict the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment not serving a highly susceptible population, are met or retain the exclusion for the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 24 hours and works in a food establishment that serves a highly susceptible population, until the conditions for reinstatement are met. If a food employee was diagnosed with an infection from non-typhoidal salmonella and excluded, restrict the food employee, who is asymptomatic for at least 30 days until conditions for are met. Retain the exclusion for the food employee who is symptomatic, until conditions for reinstatement as specified under subsection 7 A or B of this section are met. 2. Reinstate a food employee who is excluded if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority and one of the following conditions is met. The food employee has been jaundiced for more than 7 calendar days. The food employee has been symptomatic with symptoms other than jaundice for more than 14 calendar days. Or the food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee is free of a hepatitis A virus infection and 3. Reinstate a food employee who is excluded if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority. The food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner that states the food employee is free from this typhi infection. Four, reinstate a food employee who is excluded or who is restricted if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority and one of the following conditions is met. The excluded or restricted food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee is free of a norovirus infection. The food employee was excluded or restricted after symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea resolved, and more than 48 hours have passed since the food employee became asymptomatic. Or the food employee was excluded or restricted and did not develop symptoms, and more than 48 hours have passed since the food employee was diagnosed. 5. Reinstate a food employee who is excluded or who is restricted if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority and one of the following conditions is met. The excluded or restricted food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee is free of a Shigella SBP. Infection based on test results showing two consecutive negative stool specimen cultures that are taken but not earlier than 48 hours after discontinuance of antibiotics and at least 24 hours apart. The food employee was excluded or restricted after symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea resolved, and more than 7 calendar days have passed since the food employee became asymptomatic. Or the food employee was excluded or restricted and did not develop symptoms, and more than 7 calendar days have passed since the food employee was diagnosed.
6. Reinstate an employee who is excluded or restricted if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority and one of the following conditions is met. The excluded or restricted food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee is free of an infection from Shiga toxin producing a Sherichia coli based on test results that show two consecutive negative stool specimen cultures that are taken not earlier than 48 hours after discontinuance of antibiotics and at least 24 hours apart. The food employee was excluded or restricted after symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea resolved and more than seven calendar days have passed since the food employee became asymptomatic. Or the food employee was excluded or restricted and did not develop symptoms and more than seven days have passed since the food employee was diagnosed. 7. Reinstate a food employee who is excluded or who is restricted if the person in charge obtains approval from the regulatory authority and one of the following conditions is met. The excluded or restricted food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee is free of a non-typhoidal salmonella infection based on test results showing two consecutive negative stool specimen cultures that are taken not earlier than 48 hours after discontinuance of antibiotics and at least 24 hours apart. The food employee was restricted after symptoms of vomiting or diarrhea resolved, and more than 30 days have passed since the food employee became asymptomatic, or the food employee was excluded or restricted and did not develop symptoms, and more than 30 days have passed since the food employee was diagnosed. 8. Reinstate a food employee who is excluded or restricted if the food employee provides to the person in charge written medical documentation from a health practitioner stating that the food employee meets one of the following conditions has received antibiotic therapy for streptococcus pyogens infection for more than 24 hours, has at least one negative throat specimen culture for streptococcus pyogens infection, or is otherwise determined by a health practitioner to be free of a streptococcus pyogens infection. 9. Reinstate a food employee who was if the skin, infected wound, cut, or pistellar boil is properly covered with one of the following, an impermeable cover such as a finger caught or stall and a single-use glove over the impermeable cover if the infected wound or pistellar boil is on the hand, finger, or wrist. An impermeable cover on the arm if the infected wound or pistellar boil is on the arm. Or a dry, durable, tight-fitting bandage if the infected wound or pistellar boil is on another part of the body. Ten, reinstate a food employee who is and was exposed to one of the following pathogens, norovirus and one of the following conditions is met, more than 48 hours have passed since the last day the food employee was potentially exposed, or more than 48 hours have passed since the food employee's household contact became asymptomatic. Shigella SPP or Shiga toxin producing a Escherichia coli and one of the following conditions is met. More than three calendar days have passed since the last day the food employee was potentially exposed or more than three calendar days have passed since the food employee's household contact became asymptomatic. S. Typhi and one of the following conditions is met. More than 14 calendar days have passed since the last day the food employee was potentially exposed. Or more than 14 calendar days have passed since the food employee's household contact became asymptomatic. Hepatitis A virus and one of the following conditions is met. The food employee is immune to hepatitis A virus infection because of a prior illness from hepatitis A. The food employee is immune to hepatitis A virus infection because of vaccination against hepatitis A. The food employee is immune to hepatitis A virus infection because of IG administration. More than 30 calendar days have passed since the last day the food employee was potentially exposed. More than 30 calendar days have passed since the food employee's household contact became jaundiced. Or the food employee does not use an alternative procedure that allows bare hand contact with ready-to-eat food until at least 30 days after the potential exposure and the food employee receives additional training about hepatitis A symptoms and preventing the transmission, proper hand-washing procedures, and protecting ready-to-eat food from contamination introduced by bare hand contact.
Bear hand contact with ready-to-eat food Food employees serving a highly susceptible population may not handle ready-to-eat food with their bare hands. One the permit holder has obtained approval from the regulatory authority and maintains proof of the approval at the facility for review during inspection. 2. Written procedures are maintained in the food establishment and made available to the regulatory authority upon request that include for each bare hand contact procedures, a listing of the specific ready-to-eat foods and food additives that are touched by bare hand. 3. A written employee health policy that details how the food establishment complies, documentation that food employees and conditional employees that they are informed to report information about their health and activities as they relate to gastrointestinal symptoms and diseases that are transmittable through food, documentation that food employees and conditional employees acknowledge their responsibilities, and documentation that the person in charge acknowledges the responsibilities. 4. Food handlers not serving a highly susceptible population may contact exposed, ready-to-eat food with their bare hand if documentation is maintained at the food establishment that the food handlers acknowledge that they have received training in, the risks of contacting the specific ready-to-eat foods with their bare hands, proper hand washing, when to wash their hands, where to wash their hands, proper fingernail maintenance, prohibition of jewelry, good hygienic practices, Employee health policies that detail how the food establishment complies with these rules. 229.163 D 1 2 5. Five. That hands are washed before food preparation and as necessary to prevent cross-contamination of food during all hours of operation when the specific ready-to-eat foods are prepared. Six. Food handlers who handle ready-to-eat foods with their bare hands must utilize two or more of the following control measures to provide additional safeguards or in addition to proper hand washing. Double hand washing, use of nail brushes, hand sanitizer after hand washing, participate in incentive programs, paid sick leave, which encourages food handlers not to work when they are ill. Other regulatory agency approved control measures are followed, and seven. Corrective actions are taken when something goes wrong. End of lesson 2 We recommend that you download the PDH of this lesson for reference.